What's the etiquette for shooting in a cemetery? Hey, what's up you guys? Nick here. For those of you new to my channel, my name is Nick. I'm a professional photographer. I've been shooting professionally for the last four years, though I've had a camera in my hand for the last 17. And in that 17 year time span, I have shot in cemeteries a lot. If any of you are familiar with my work, so people who have watched a few of my videos before, people who follow me on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter, which I will link those down below, you are familiar with the darker style of my work. And mostly that's what gets posted because that's my favorite style to work in. Now, along with that comes some cemetery shoots. And cemetery shoots are a bit iffy. There are a lot of people in the community who are all for them and they love them. There are a lot of people in the community who are very, very much against them. And by that, I mean photographers and models. There's some models that love doing cemetery shoots. There's some that are absolutely against it. And there are photographers who are pro cemetery shoots and there are photographers who are against cemetery shoots. So what rules do I follow when I'm shooting in a cemetery to make sure that I try to make the least amount of people pissed off as possible? Now, you're not going to please everyone. If you're shooting in a cemetery, there's definitely going to be people that are mad at you. There's, there's no way around it. There's still going to be some people who are mad at you. But what are some steps you can take in order to kind of stay respectful in any way that you can? So here I'm going to share some steps that I take to stay as respectful as possible while shooting in a cemetery. Now, the first thing I do is I try to pick an older cemetery with a really, really old section. The older sections are more beautiful to shoot in anyways, as the headstone work is usually a lot more detailed, a lot prettier. You have more Masonic symbols or any of the other weird religious symbols that are on those headstones that you don't really find in the newer sections are not quite as often. Now, it's not just beauty that I choose the older section of a cemetery. The second part of that is you're less likely to run into living relatives. You don't want to go and shoot at a cemetery right next to a grieving family, whether they're at a funeral or they're visiting a loved one that has passed away. So I try to stick to the older parts of cemeteries. The cemetery I, that I primarily shoot in, which is actually in the town I used to live in, has a section with the newest headstones in the 1920s. Now, there might be some living relatives around, but it's not quite as likely as say shooting on a headstone from 2020. You don't want to do that. It can be seen as very disrespectful. You can disrespect the family that way. And you're already going to make some people mad because you're shooting in a cemetery. So the best case scenario is to try to piss off the least amount of people as possible. Um, and what I mean by people getting pissed off is generally other photographers. That's really the only people I've seen get super mad about it. The next part of that is I always shoot from the back of a headstone. And the reason I do that is I don't want the names on the headstones. Now you can edit those out in Photoshop, but I find it easier that if I'm shooting in front of a headstone that the model is far enough off of it that the Aboka effect will blank out the names on the headstone. Some of the more extravagant monuments I might shoot up right against if they have something really cool to say, like in this image here where it says Beyond the Summerlands ends with Coda and the names you can't see. You could identify that headstone if you knew who it was, but the death date on that's like 1890, so I wasn't too concerned at that point. Now the second part of that is I generally try to keep people from draping on the headstones. It's one thing to lean against one of the taller monuments, but to be laying on the gravestone or even being draped completely over it. Again, it really depends on how you feel. Personally, I will photograph someone if they're laying next to a grave or even on top of a grave if it's a much older grave and the names aren't seen. It comes down to personal preference. It comes down to your own belief systems and the belief systems of the model or the client. I don't have an issue with it. I wouldn't have an issue with it if someone decided to take photos on top of my grave and that's kind of the route I go. But again, we're shooting in an older part of the cemetery less likely that families are going to be grieving. Uh, the next part of it is, is I'm ready to reschedule that shoot at a moment's notice. If there is a funeral going on in that cemetery, anywhere in that cemetery, I will not do a photo shoot during that funeral. That is extremely disrespectful. You're going to make people mad. They're emotional. They might come confront you and you don't want that to happen. If you're wearing something like me, where it says the name of my business right there, I don't want them to leave me a nasty review about doing that. So if I pull up and there's a fresh grave or they're digging a grave, I don't shoot that day, period. I am ready to reschedule. I will not work with a model who doesn't have that respect. So really, it's not too much of a concern. Coda's always been really cool about it. And, and so has Starla. The two sets of photos that I'm featuring in this were both with Coda and Starla, and they're both extremely respectful and cool with that, so it wasn't really a big deal. So again, older part of the cemetery, make sure there's no grieving families around, 
don't shoot during a funeral. Be prepared to reschedule if you have to. Try to keep the deceased's names out of any of your photos, whether it's through Photoshop, bokeh effects, or shooting from behind the gravestones themselves. Try to be respectful of the cemetery rules. Don't shoot after dark if you're not allowed to be there after dark. You don't wanna be you know, in trouble for trespassing or anything like that. It just so happens the cemetery I usually go to. We are allowed in after dark. I just haven't scheduled that shoot yet. I figured a glow stick shoot after dark with the possibility of capturing the photo of a ghost would be pretty cool, especially if we took out my Nikon D70 full spectrum because I have captured orbs with that camera before. I'm gonna link the video to that camera right up there. So you guys have it. Those are my rules for having a photo shoot in a cemetery. Be respectful, be ready to reschedule, try to keep people's names out of it. No matter what, some people are gonna get mad that you're doing photo shoots in cemeteries. That can't be helped, it's gonna happen. If it's a risk you're willing to take to get those images, by all means, just be respectful about it. This video is a little bit shorter than the last few and it's cutting in between two camera views. So next week we have a camera view going up. So thank you guys again so much for joining me on this adventure. Again, at 1,000 subscribers, I'm giving away this Nikon N80 35mm film camera without the lens, just the body. We hit 500 extremely quickly. I think I hit 500 subscribers in about a year. I sent that jolly look out to the person who won that. So they wanted to remain anonymous. Thank you guys again so much. Please like, comment, subscribe. Hit the bell notification so you know right when I upload. Leave a comment, hit me up on any of my social medias, which again are linked down in the description below. If you have any questions or concerns, I am pretty good about answering everyone. If I don't have the answer, for it, I can find a resource for the answer and send that along its way. So thank you guys again so much. You have a wonderful afternoon and I will catch you all on the flip side. Bye.